After lunch, PowerShell is becoming one of the more important tools, uh, especially when you want to avoid, as an attacker, when you want to avoid carrying stuff with you, living off the land. And we're going to have a nice talk by Yossi uh, that shows how to use PowerShell as a hacking tool. This is very, very exciting. So thank you for that. A round of applause for Yossi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, hello everybody. Hi. How are you? I'm Yossi and this is what I do. But uh, this is the <laughs> but, but, So I, I have a day job and a night job. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the maybe less exciting part of uh, my life, but uh, the part I'm as passionate as I am about the music life. So I've been with keyboards and code for a long time. Also with the guitar, quite, quite the same time. Um, working uh, most of the time independently as a freelancer, etc. Uh, and doing some, uh, being a white hat basically, working a lot with the government, finance, around the world. Um, I'm co-founding um, CyberArt, not uh, ARC. This is a product that we bypass when we have to go into a network. But uh, no, they're great guys, don't get me wrong. The <laughs> pim pam piras ham thing, but still. Um, and I'm also very honored to be a member of uh, Javelin, uh, the board of Javelin that got acquired by Symantec uh, last year. And we have people from the crowd here. I'm Javelin, so give it up to them. So we're going to talk about PowerShell. Uh, ten tips out of, uh, honestly, a gazillion I can talk about PowerShell and my trip with PowerShell since uh, 2003, since the Monad days, and then Microsoft Shell, and then they branded it PowerShell. So really over a decade working with PowerShell, all the dog food, the beta, beta stuff, uh, and uh, training about that, and also showing you some cool research that we do. So basically, what is PowerShell? For people that are not totally aware about PowerShell, that's that blue uh, shell thing, blue icon. Um, uh, that's normally, we call it the Microsoft shell for sysadmins. And that, that helps hackers a lot, because it's uh, commonly uh, mis misleadingly perceived as the shell for sysadmins. But for hackers, this is really a totally different story. PowerShell is just a spoon, you know? And we, we do whatever we want with that. We bend that spoon on a daily basis, and I'll show you how. Uh, it's basically CMD on steroids. But it's much more than that. It's uh, .NET CMD. It's really living off the land heaven for, uh, for Windows. It's a wrapper around Windows. Every API, protocol, system calls, whatever. Uh, every DLL, everything that you ever imagined, you can address with uh, a lot of functionality and very little syntax. And it's uh, living off the land. So it's pre-installed. Pre, uh, it's built in Windows 7 and above. And it runs even on XP. Uh, Etc. It's uh, probably the ideal tool of choice in many scenarios for post-exploitation and other stuff. And it's also open source for almost three years now. People are not aware of it, but PowerShell is totally open sourced on GitHub. Uh, before, GitHub uh, belonged to Microsoft, actually. And uh, it runs uh, real nice on Linux and Mac OS X. Uh, you can run it on Docker, etc. So you can do really cool stuff about it. But the most important thing about PowerShell, it's based on .NET Framework, and it works with objects. When I say works with objects, it means that everything you do in PowerShell, you get back an object. So think about you know, the day-to-day -day, uh, productivity of uh, Bash and, and stuff like that, and very intuitive shells, uh, but with the power of Python. So I like to call it, uh, if we take a Bash KSH, C shell script, Python, Perl, and .NET into a motel room, and you'll hear funny noises, <laughs> and in the morning, there was a baby conceived, that would be partial. So here you're seeing like four or five uh, words, you know, with two, three pipes. I uh, took uh, a bunch of IP addresses, uh, ran the curl IP info, got the JSON, converted the JSON in memory, living off the land, and uh, got uh, a grid on, um, on the fly. So that's the power of PowerShell. That's why it's called PowerShell. So we can do a lot of stuff with PowerShell. Let's start with the basic. I'll run you through some basic, and then we'll show some research, and then we'll show some f fun stuff. 
So you can invoke, execute basically any text stream you think, uh, GIP, compressed, whatever. You can run in memory files without touching the disk. You can use COM objects, MSXML, IE, but also from Windows 7 and above, you can use the net web client from .NET, and you can also invoke web requests, the curl wget of uh, PowerShell. So basically, basically invoke expression, or IEX, that it's alias. You take any text, and basically it executes it. Okay, so if I take getwmi win32 BIOS, I pipe it into invoke expression, it actually executes that code. And uh, this, this is very easy also to bypass uh, script execution policies, stuff like that. But you can also use the built-in .NET uh, web client class. Uh, this allows you to download the strings, download files, etc. You can download the string uh, from anywhere in the LAN on the internet or from a shortcut, and then you can pipe it to invoke expression, and it just runs it. So it's very, very easy, very popular methods. You see it in many uh, malware cases in the analysis, investigations, and you can also curl that from your own server, and that works beautifully. You can also harness the power of .NET to your own good, and you can do that with very, uh, um, basically everything you can think about, you know? Everything you need to do, the .NET framework is there for your help. You can harness its power for everything, whether it's uh, mathematical, uh, algorithms or whatever, if you want to do some calculations, byte calculations. Uh, there is a lot of work on, uh, done on the system reflection, on reflection DLLs, so you can actually call any DLL directly from the command line and uh, check stuff whenever you want. So if I want to know if the caps lock is on, I just call the reflection console uh, class and I can know if the caps lock is on or off. Very basic stuff, but sometimes, you know, when you're in the field, and especially when you're doing red teaming, and and you want to do stuff uh, you know, with keyboard access, whether it's a C2 or, or physical access, you want to uh, be able to do that stuff quickly. So PowerShell is about that. It thinks about the person. Uh, and it thinks about the person that has little time and needs to do a lot of stuff. So in this case, I'm just uh, uh, converting to char array uh, string. And then for each string, I'm checking if it's up, upper or lower. Very simple, but just to show you the power of the language. Third, you can convert any to any. Whatever any you have in mind, you can compare it, digest it, convert it, XML, JSON, bytes, XML, and you can also convert from, convert to, and you can also import and export. For example, you can convert anything to JSON. So you can take a process, all its threads, everything you want, and you can convert it to JSON on the fly. This is living off the land. I, these functions, until now, uh, there's no special uh, code here, yeah? It exists in every uh, Windows version. You can run it and execute it. You can convert to HTML, CSV quite easily. This is stuff that it's nice for the system admins. Uh, can convert to XML, of course, and you can also export. Export means converting and uh, saving out file, redirecting basically the output to, to a file or to a printer or whatever we want. And in this case, of course, we, we got the, the XML. But we can also do some uh, other con conversions. For example, we can take uh, any bytes. I can read bytes off a file very easily with the IO file, read all bytes. So I can read the bytes off this file and I can uh, convert them very easily to, for example, for row hex, I can get to string and I can get the, the hex from, that, uh, from, that, uh, from those bytes. And if I want to dwell in it some more, I can take those bytes and actually uh, join them and I can get the row hex. So all these one-liners, very powerful, living of the land. Um, let's get into the juicy stuff as hackers, okay? So you can fish any credentials with a, a dialog box. Ex actually, there is a one-liner to do it and you can customize in that one-liner one the, uh, the text that you want to have in the form header, the text inside, etc. And you can also take it to the next level with the Windows Security Credential UI with uh, uh, the stuff that Viros did, I think is here in the audience, uh, with Cred Leaker. So this is a single liner. Sometimes you don't have to go to LSAS and dumping and mimicats and all this stuff. You just uh, pop up this credential also remotely, and I can get the network credential in clear text. Who speaks about dumps? You know, people come back to the old school stuff, you know, just credential phishing. And you can also get the, the, this dialog box. This baby actually sends a, an HTTP get, you know, to a, your Apache server or whatever, and it leaks your credentials uh, to somewhere else in the network or outside the network. Let's get serious. PowerShell is an illusion. Under the .NET framework, PowerShell exe is just a variant. You know, it's like it's a plague, it's a disease. It's just one variant out of the many. And you can, basically what you call PowerShell is system management automation inside the .NET framework. It's uh, built in into the framework, hence Windows in the last two decades. 
And what you see is just the host interface. So PowerShell essentially is just variant. So if you're trying to protect PowerShell exe, you're maybe going uh, statistically to a, a right place, but you're leaving away the serious hackers. Um, so PowerShell, for example, can be in very interesting places. For example, did you know that when you run troubleshoot wizards, it's just a PowerShell script. As you see in the background, there is a nice defense uh, control technique that's called transcriptions. So it transcripts every PowerShell script that you run. You have, this is not turned on by default. You have to run it with Go Policy Registry. And basically, it, uh, it audits all the input output from your PowerShell code, even if the host of the PowerShell code is not PowerShell. So whether you inject it, run DLL, whatever, or this exit that I built, that just gets out the BIOS information. So you, as you can see, it got audited, and you see the transcript. So basically, PowerShell can come from any executable that references system management automation. Um, we can go uh, further than that. For example, I can uh, use this uh, base64 uh, encoded string, yes, for getting the BIOS information. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run it and I'm going to show you how we run PowerShell without PowerShell exe we saw. Now I'm going to run PowerShell without a process. So now uh, I turned on process creation and termination inside the policy of this machine. And as you can see, um, I'm, I have here some code that what it does basically it queries the event log of the machine, security event log, and shows us uh, the last creation and termination events. So you can see magnify that I just used. In, a, in this short uh, video. And now we're gonna run uh, some other processes. For example, we're gonna run Notepad. Okay, we're gonna run Notepad. We're gonna uh, maximize Notepad, terminate Notepad. And then we're gonna uh, run this again. And as you can see, voila. So we saw Notepad, SVC host. You can count on SVC host to appear in every uh, 10, 20 seconds or something like that in Windows. And uh, basically I have this uh, MSTSC, you know, the Microsoft Terminal Service Client, uh, the RDP, but uh, this is, a uh, slightly different variation of it that runs encoded strings. So if the customer is not checking for hashing, I can uh, put it uh, as MSTSC, and all the customer will see is uh, MSTSC exe was launched. So you see I have my MSTSC, uh, I, I handle this executable. What it has is basically a piece of code that runs a system auto management automation run space. But now I'm going to run a different function that I'm going to put uh, on the GitHub later. And what this function does, it takes a binary, whether a URL or a file, and it invokes it in memory. We use, I use it the .NET load binary function. And this means that I'm loading the binary in memory to the C-sharp compiler, and I'm running encoded base 64 without using the process. Good luck with that. So there is no spoon. PowerShell is just a spoon, guys. You know, don't get excited about spoons, especially if they're plastic. No, I'm kidding. It's a very good spoon. Very good spoon. Uh, uh, you can run PowerShell code there, PowerShell uh, PSWA, uh, Power PWSH, or PowerShell exe, and you can actually run PowerShell as you just saw, from binary without running the binary process. Next, you can run uh, language, uh, .NET language directly in PowerShell. It doesn't matter. You can run the syntax directly, VBScript, JavaScript, C-sharp, and you can also utilize local variables and functions from your sessions to remote sessions. So, First thing we're gonna show, I'm gonna put some uh, C-sharp code just uh, between this uh, here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that's basically a C-sharp code. And when I run it, I add type. So now I have this type inside my shell and I run this C-sharp uh, function. The, this uh, C-sharp function is running directly in PowerShell. So I don't need to compile anything. No DLLs, executables. I can run C-sharp directly. Uh, I'm running on a host name called Lone DC one and I have a remote session saved into a variable on a client, Lone CL1. I can get this PowerShell session. PowerShell sessions are uh, the way that PowerShell, uh, it's like the built-in SSH for PowerShell. PS Remoting, WinRM works with the Web Services Management Protocol, SOAP XML. And you can see that when I run, I invoke command into this remote session, so I can see the host name of that remote machine, machine is, of course, Lone CL1. And I can run IP config, whatever, of course, this is the new RDP. Instead of ransomware deployment protocol, you have uh, PS Remoting. So this is my IP, and uh, now I can run whatever I want. And I'll show you this dollar using. So dollar using, basically you can uh, send, it's, it's just HTTP, and it's also uh, encrypted with your TGS. When you work in a domain, so Kerberos tickets encrypts all the traffic, so I can just send over local variables to 100, 1,000 
10,000 machines from uh, my own machine. I don't have to redistribute code or uh, variables. Now I created a local function, get hostname. That's what, what, that's what this function does. But I can run my local function directly on the remote host. So if I run it locally, of course, this is the result, this is the last result, and you don't have this function in the remote machine, as you probably understood. So that makes things interesting. Seven, you can actually turn everything into an object when you work with PowerShell. Literally, no regex, very intuitive, in memory, on the fly. There are a lot of living off the land tools that do a great job, you know, c -Ackles, whatever, Netstat, and, but the problem with them is that they work with text. You know, and text is very nice. For example, one of those tools is KList, Kerberos tickets in memory. And KList, of course, I can uh, grab it, select string, I can take from it certain strings, HTTP, but uh, I can do more with that. Maybe I want the entire ticket. So I can, how can I do that without going into regex headache? So I can basically just send out a sample output from any tool, Mimikets, Netstat, whatever, and I can just tell PowerShell how a standard output of uh, this uh, application, this tool, looks like. And I can just put it between, between curly brackets and just uh, uh, name my own properties. And basically, it will convert it to objects according to the curly brackets and the uh, uh, properties that I put. So let's just go over a bit quickly here. And as you can see, I delete whatever I don't need. And voila, now I can pipe it into convert from string and use the template file I just created and watch this. It literally turns everything into objects. So you can use any tool you want and convert it into objects in like two, three minutes uh, and turn it into whatever. And uh, just, you know, because, uh, you know, it's something that uh, it's really mitbakesh <laughs> to do. So uh, you can net start convert from string into a template I put in memory. It's just a string, template content. You don't need it on a file. And then I get objects. So you can just basically turn anything you want into objects. Um, of course, PowerShell is a full-fledged, uh, blown shell. You can do whatever you want, run shell codes, buffers, compressions, etc. Um, let's look at a, a real uh, malicious code sample I caught on a, on a customer. Uh, so this uh, has a base64 encoded string, that's where it started, but when I con uh, decode it from base64, that's when we get the real PowerShell uh, going on. So as you can see, it uh, creates there is an invoke expression. We saw this bad guy in the beginning, and then there is a stream reader, and it decompresses it and enrich to end. You have to be careful with the invoke expression, even if you're running on a VM. Uh, you know, just neutralize it and uh, uh, just run it through the end, and then you'll get the uh, decompressed string. And here in the decompressed, uh, the code. So actually, now we get the partial code. As you can see, it's doing vialloc stuff that we know, some C-sharp code. And uh, it's doing, uh, of course, uh, allocating a buffer, creating a thread, and waiting for a single object, which is the thread. Okay? So uh, all we have to do is just to get the shell code. So now I can get the shell code directly from that. And this shell code I can run in shell code debugger or whatever, decompile it, see the actual CPU instructions, etc. all from PowerShell. Uh, but there are PowerShell defenses. You know, PowerShell has great defenses. We can't talk about all of them. Uh, protected event logging is an interesting one that nobody talks a lot about. Uh, Basically, it's the ability to, because when you uh, log PowerShell events to the event log, so basically you log everything, also the IT systems on the day-to-day, -day, and uh, basically uh, it logs connection strings, uh, database, you know, uh, hosts in the network, etc. So uh, Microsoft uh, developed protected event logging, basically a registry setting, HK local machine, that you can actually uh, encrypt with a public key certificate with cryptography, it matches syntax, CMS, you can protect the messages. Uh, and that's a very cool blue team technique. But what if I thought about it, I tried it in few customer uh, engagements and it worked like uh, magic. What if you think ransomware for event logs? What if you turn it around and you use it against Microsoft? So that's exactly what I do. The minute I have uh, LPE, so uh, I uh, take my own certificate. So if you look today on the event logs, so that's what you see from the messages in the event log. Uh, you can see the invocation and the warnings. You can see the actual content in the message of the, of the event. But once I set this property to on, to enable protected event login, and I give it my own uh, thumbprint, my own certificate, now when I will run a different uh, code or a different shell, for example, I will open up, uh, fire up a new shell and run some code in it. So 
The next thing that will happen is now I'll go back and query the, the event viewer is basically me as an attacker, everything I do is, the syslog gets all the right information. It gets the time created, ID, level, but everything is encrypted. <laughs> so good luck with your forensics uh, afterwards to understand uh, what we just uh, did here. So don't ask uh, what uh, the shell can do for you, ask what you can do to the shell. So you show our pass, you say, <laughs> we thought about that. We have Omer, Bdalu, Yair, and uh, the team in uh, Javelin. And, and really, I was uh, very happy to be part of, of uh, this uh, research. Basically, Omer led us uh, into the beautiful uh, ways of uh, you know, getting JIT code addresses, working with the CLR profiler, really a common object that I don't know how many of you are aware or using, but beautiful way to hook PowerShell and then hook the system core DLL for the event log, and then to hook the, uh, all the calls to AMSI through the system calls. Uh, basically with simple replace with red opcode and uh, so I don't have time to show this and Omer talked about it in depth but I will just tell you that when we, once we run this, uh, I'll let you see uh, Omer's uh, talk in Derbycon, uh, once you run this you have no visibility of the attacker, in visible, literally, no transcripts, no logging, no AMSI, you can run whatever you want, mimicats and nothing gets logged, oh it powers hell, that's what it does, key takeaways, partial rocks, for the red team, try to use PowerShell 2. No uh, blue team defenses there, or use a VisiShell. We are flagged as malware. Mm. But you can create variants, because we are on GitHub. Look, it, look for it. Don't lose your Python skills, but for Windows with automation, this is your ultimate choice. It's very fun, and there are multiple offensive frameworks. Behind every good hacker, there is a, a, a very good, uh, even greater developer. It's always a team, all the good things that we do. Dor, my partner at CyberArt, Omer, Bdalu, Yair, and all the team from Javelin. And you should check Omer's uh, talk in DerbyCon, but you should check him out this upcoming DEF CON on the main stage. Yeah! <laughs> Bdalu! So, He's going to talk about some other stuff, but uh, definitely uh, one of the more pure genius minds you'll see, very humble. Only thing that uh, uh, is close to his coding technique is his sense of humor, and you should really check that out. So, peace, everybody. T. Hanks. Wow.